What's going on everybody? Spaceballs here. Welcome back to another Skylanders video. Alright everyone, today I want to talk about the Scroll Dungeon 3F to be exact. Now I know in the past I made a video on the Scroll Dungeon, but that was only when I was able to farm 2F. So today I wanted to show you what team I was using in 3F because I know a lot of people struggle farming Scroll Dungeon 3F and it can be really tough. And I know there is a rumor going around saying that you need Mysticat to actually farm it. But that's not true because Mysticat hasn't always been in the game and people have been farming 3F since the beginning. So I want to show you the team I'm using today, and it does not have Flashwing or Mysticat. You guys already know the team that I have built and the team that I use to clear all the content. And the reason I love showcasing this team so much is because it literally clears all the content in the game. So I'll show you the team we're using first, like I always do, because I know a lot of you guys can be new to the channel. Maybe you haven't seen the older videos, so you don't know what team I'm using, you don't know the runes I have on the team. So before we get into actual runs, like I always do, I'll show you the team, I'll show you the runes, the stats, and then we will get into some runs here. So first up is Pit Boss. I always tell you guys when you're building your first Legendary, make sure you build one that's going to carry you through all the content because building a Legendary is few and far between. And after you build your first Legendary, you won't be able to get a second one built up for a very long time. So it's important that you really focus on a Legendary that's going to help you in your current content. And that's what I did. So I've shown my Pit Boss many times. I'll click on his main stats so you guys can see it. Now his effect accuracy is very low. I want to get this higher. Other than that, he's pretty much perfect for me. The only thing I would like to change here is this effect, actually. I would like to have this 200+, plus, but until I get him on 6-star runes, I don't think that's going to be possible unless I max out this effect, actually, here. And then I put another effect accuracy over here on his gloves. But honestly, I don't want to do that. I only want to run one effect accuracy as a main stat. I don't like running two. I barely like running one. But Skylanders like Pit Boss are the exception to the rule when it comes to running main stats, as in, like, effect accuracy, effect resistance so forth and so forth so pit boss is one of those skylanders that you will run a main stat of effect accuracy i just only want to run one not two so that's pit boss this is main stats we have one effect accuracy here and then the rest is defense and hp and then i did want a little bit of damage on him so i did go with some crit rate and some crit damage on some of the substats next up is flare wolf you guys know i love this man he's amazing all his runes are maxed out but they are five stars eventually i do want to get him on six star runes so in many other videos, I show their runes, so I'm not going to get too much into the runes here. I just want to show you the stats quickly. So I'll just click on their stats so you can see them here on the right-hand side, and then we'll get right into these runs here. So with Flare Wolf, I wanted to get as much attack as possible, as much HP as possible, because he does do damage to himself. And I have him on a lifesteal set, so whatever damage he does to himself, he usually heals it back, because his A2 does huge damage. And with a lifesteal set, it actually heals him up most of the way. And then we want as much crit rate and crit damage as possible, followed up with some defense, it is hard to get all of these stats on Flare Wolf, so we did have to sacrifice some defense, which is fine. Again, we have our beloved Robe Roller. We love her. Again, with Robe Roller, we want attack, crit rate, crit damage. She is a DPS unit. And we do want some effect accuracy, but I'm not as worried about that on her as I am on Stink Bomb. Because she is more for raw damage, I think. Because she does do big damage. So I'm more concerned about the damage than I actually am effect accuracy. And then last up, we have Stink Bomb. Again, high attack. HP, defense, crit rate, crit damage. The crit rate is low. I would like to get this higher. Eventually in the future, when I can actually upgrade 6-star runes, I will make the stats what I want them to be. It's just early game or even a couple months into the game, it's really hard to get all the stats you're looking for because there's so many stats and 6-star runes are so hard to power up because the gold is just not there. I should say gold and ether is not there, not just gold. It's a problem on both ends. Most of the time, I run out of ether before I run out of gold. So that's the team we're using. I'm building up Tide Pool and Airstrike. Eventually, I will switch them in. But for this video here, we're going to stick to our main team. And this is the team we use to basically clear all the content in the game. So now let's pull up the Scroll Dungeon here, and let's do a couple of runs so you guys can see how the team works. Now, 3F is probably one of the hardest dungeons in this game to date because the enemy does a lot of poison diminished damage. I'm not using Mysticat, and I'm not using Flashwing. Now, this run has potential to fail sometimes, it honestly doesn't really fail that much. I think it failed once out of like the 30 times I did it. And honestly, I think that was before Oscar was in the game. Once I switched to Oscar, it has not been a problem anymore because having that extra heal on top of Pit Boss's support heal made it so the runs are basically 100%. So that's why Oscar can be game changing in a lot of this content as well. So I know Oscar does cost 500 gems, but I really do believe he's worth it. So let's get into some runs here so you guys can see how the team works. And again, if you have Mysticat, if you have Flashwing, this is probably going to be a lot easier for you. 
And I will honestly tell you, until I got my runes basically maxed out, so 5-star runes almost maxed out, I was not able to clear this dungeon either. Once again, this is the hardest dungeon in the game, because not a lot of PvE content has that strong diminished poison, you know, from the enemy side. And this dungeon really dishes out the damage when it comes to that. So until I maxed out my runes and I had Pit Boss maxed out, and I got my Flare Wolf basically exactly where I wanted him, I honestly couldn't clear this dungeon neither without Flash Ring or Mysticat. But the reason I want to make this video here today is just to really show you guys that you don't need Flash Ring or Mysticat. It is possible as long as you ruin your Skylanders the right way and you ruin them with enough HP and defense and paired with the new Portal Master Oscar and then having some type of support here like Pit Boss. And I know there's other ones in the game. I don't know them offhand. But if you look through your box, I'm sure you'll find other support units like Pit Boss, maybe Sprocket, for example. If you have Spotlight, I know she's not easy to get, but I know a lot of you guys have been lucky with your pulls. Even like a Light Flash Wing, something like that. Something that is a support healer to your team paired with Oscar will actually give you more than enough heals to clear this dungeon. And on top of that, you also want some debuffs. Now, when you get later in the game, you will do enough DPS damage that you won't need actual debuffs. But in the scroll dungeon, having debuffs is really good because towards the end, you might be cutting it really close as far as like having all these diminishes and poisons stacked on you. So if you're putting a ton of diminishes and poisons on the boss, by the end of it, it will actually tick the boss down. And by the time these diminishes do enough damage to you, the boss will already be taken care of. So you won't have to worry about doing an insane amount of DPS damage to the boss where you can't actually clear the stage. Like you see here, we actually came really close to dying off. But because of Oscar and Pit Boss with his lifesteal and then his heal from his strip, it actually gave us enough health to get through the next couple stages. And now we put up a poison, a bomb, and then soon a diminish. And within the next two turns of this boss moving, he is finished. And it's just as easy as that. No Mysticat, no Flash Wing. We cleared it, no problem. Again, I didn't take notice of how many turns that was. I'm so bad at paying attention to the turn meter. I think we're in like... 12 to 15 turns i'm not sure let's run another one so we can see how many turns i promise i'll pay attention to it this time and back to my point here if you're not doing enough dps damage debuffs are always the way to go yes sometimes they take longer and maybe it'll add an extra couple turns but in the long run if you can't do enough dps damage and what i mean by that is like glass cannon damage without a diminished poison or a bomb you are way better off going with a team that is going to give you a ton of debuffs. And when I say that, I mean poison, diminish, bombs. It's actually going to help you out in the long run. Because yes, it's a couple turns longer. But it is so hard, especially in Skylanders and in any gotch game for that matter. It's so hard to get the amount of DPS damage you need to one-shot a boss. And Skylanders definitely is one of those games where like DPS damage is not as good as it would be in other games yes flare wolf does do good dps damage same with super shot and there's many other ones that do but it is so hard to get them to the point where they can like you know half shot or one shot one of these bosses especially 3f i don't think it's really possible to one shot the 3f boss maybe i'm wrong let me know in the comments but again i'm a free-to-play player so in my eyes, it's going to take me so long to get to that point where I could just do a ton of DPS damage to a boss and be able to take him out within two turns so I don't have to worry about my glass cannons, you know, getting one shot or getting taken out early. So in my eyes, debuffs have been a godsend to me. And when I say that, like, the reason my team clears all the content, and even before I built Flare Wolf, my team was clearing all the content. Same with Pit Boss. Before I built Pit Boss and Flare Wolf, my team was clearing all the content and I had, I believe, Flashwing and Stealth Elf. And that's because my team was strong on debuffs. Debuffs are literally going to help you and carry you through the entire game. You don't need anything else. Yes, it might make your runs a little bit slower. But it's going to make them more stable. Because we all know that when you're running straight DPS damage teams, the runs are not as stable because you're not focusing on HP and defense. If you look at all my Skylanders... They're all ruined with DPS stats, but they also have the HP and defense to back it up. And we look at the turn meter here, and it's only 10 turns. That was 11 turns, and it was right in the beginning of 11 turns that the boss went out. So it was actually 10 turns. We were able to clear 3F, and in my eyes, that is insanely fast. And we're not even coming close to being taken out by the enemy with their poisons and diminishes. And there's no Mysticat here. There's no Whirlwind sets. 
There's no Flashwing. We're just basically utilizing the new Portal Master Oscar. And we're utilizing Pit Boss. And it could be any support at that matter. And we were able to turn this team into a perfect team for 3F. And let me tell you, up until like two and a half weeks ago, I couldn't even come close to clearing 3F. But once I really put my mind behind it and decided what Legendary I wanted to build and what Heroics I wanted to build to clear the PvE content, things became a lot easier. And my main point here is that you don't need any one Skylander to clear any content in this game. So don't let that get into your head like, oh, if you don't have Mystic Cat, you can't do it. If you don't have Flash Ring, you can't do it. It is not true. If you build Team Synergy and you build your team behind the Team Synergy that you're looking for, like I did, for example, I built my team behind Oscar and behind Pit Boss, you can clear any content in this game. I promise you that 100%. If you guys have any further questions on 3F, please let me know in the comments. I love to read your comments. You guys know that. And if you have anything to add to this, also let me know in the comments. But I think I got the point across here, and that is definitely going to wrap it up for this one, because I don't think we need to go any further. If you guys want to see more runs, you know my Twitch is linked down below. And I would love to do some live runs for you guys. We always run dungeons over there on Twitch. And just to throw one more thing in here, I was using George up until about last week or two weeks ago. And it was working, but it wasn't 100% stable. Oscar made this team 100% stable. So just keep that in mind as well if you have George. And my runes weren't maxed out at that point. So if you do have George and you're using George, and my George is not skilled up at all. Same with my Oscar. I have not skilled them up yet. And I'm sure if they were skilled up, this run would be even better. So just keep in mind that you can use George, especially if you have him skilled up. You don't have to switch to Oscar. George will basically do the same thing for you here because the shield will also stop you from taking debuff damage for a turn. George, I believe, would give you the same outcome as Oscar. It's just Oscar makes it a little bit more stable in my eyes. We are so close to 2.5k subs. Once we reach it, we will start another sub celebration giveaway. Thank you guys so much for the continued support here on YouTube, Twitch, and Discord. You guys are amazing. I never expected it. So I just can't thank you guys enough for it. If you want to follow me on Twitch and Discord, they are linked down below. We do two monthly giveaways on Discord, random giveaways on Twitch. We are so close to 1,000 followers on Twitch. Once we reach it, we will do a huge celebration over there on Twitch. We still have the Cookie Run giveaway going on, so I'll link that video for you here. As always, I love each and every single one of you. I will see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace.